Okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? I hope you're well. Thank you for joining in and uh, sorry for the delay of the start of the class. Uh, can someone tell me if you're able to hear me? Thank you very much, Geoffrey. So, good morning to you. Uh, <coughs> my name is Kelvin Kariuki. I'm sure we've uh, met with some of you. But for those ones who've uh, not met me, I call myself Teacher Karis. So you can always feel free to call me that. Uh, I'll be taking you through this particular uh, unit, which is Web Design and Programming 1. And to the BCT guys, it's Internet Application Programming 1. Uh, generally, I'll just be teaching you uh, how to create simple uh, websites using HTML, CSS, and some little JavaScript. Uh, this is the introductory course to web design because you're going to do either Internet Application Programming 2 or Web Application 2, Web Design and Programming 2 where you're now going to deal with uh, the backend, which is the database and uh, probably a backend language like Python or PHP in order to program the logic. Uh, please, uh, I request you to join with your mic so that we can uh, interact. Once in a while, I'll want to ask you questions and you can also be able to ask a question at any point. So please do not uh, ask the question on the public chat because I cannot be able to see it when I'm uh, when I'm sharing my screen because I'm going to minimize this particular screen so that I can share the notes. Eh? So if you if you ask on the chat, I can't be able to, I can't be able to uh, to say it. Okay, are you able to see my course outline, Geoffrey? Okay, wonderful. So really. Uh, the purpose of this unit is to introduce you to the basic concept of the web and the internet and how it works. Then also uh, to apply the web design tools, particularly HTML and CSS in creating web-oriented applications and to also employ simple JavaScript within HTML. Now, uh, let me just tell you that this is one of the simplest units that you can do. Uh, in your course, so I expect that you guys uh, score A's. If you've never gotten an A, really, this is your time to get an A because this is a very, very simple unit. So make sure you give it some time. If you give it time and you attend the classes, you do the assignments, you participate in the forum chat discussions, you should be able to perform quite well. So I wish you the best. I know that you can get an A in this one. So uh, I'm going to share this course outline. Uh, with you so that you can be able to download it even on this platform. Uh, but generally, we're going to cover today uh, about the World Wide Web so that we understand what is the World Wide Web and challenges uh, that uh, we face when we are designing web pages. Then we're also going to look at the basic principles of markup languages, uh, HTML documents, structuring text, block level and inline elements, and validating documents. Then we, when we meet up next week, we can be able to move forward by looking at uh, uh, the other bits. But generally, we will be having, a, this is a practical unit, so we are supposed to be meeting for five hours a week. Normally, it's three hours theory, two hours lab, uh, but I like interchanging that. But because you're not here, most of the time, I might mix up, I might mix up both uh, so that we uh, uh, we are able to learn the theory and do the practical maybe after after the theory after the topic, uh, so that we uh, 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 we are able to understand it better. But when you come to the campus, I'll be able to also have some lab sessions with you. We understand the challenge that some of you do not have maybe devices, uh, you do not have maybe electricity. So all those challenges we totally understand them. Uh, we are living in uh, unique times, and therefore we have to do what has to be done. But I'll also create time and meet you uh, in the lab when you come here uh, for about five weeks before you do the exams. So uh, that's why we, we're talking of labs, so we're going to ha be having all these labs 
uh, you can see the labs uh, here. You can see the labs down here, all the labs that have planned us to do and the things that have planned us to execute in each of the labs. Okay, um, I'll give you oh, practical assignments, of course. Then we'll also have uh, uh, two cuts, most likely. And uh, at the end, you'll have to do a web, a website project. So you'll have to create a website. So that's one of the things that you have to do. So that is your website project. At the end of the semester, I'll expect that you present to me a website that you've created. So this is a good time to start uh, 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 considering a, a topic whose website you want to, uh, uh, to, to develop. Then you start collecting content like images, videos, and text. So do you want to create a football website? Do you want to create uh, uh, a racing website? Any kind of website you want to create. Just pick up a topic, start looking at the content so that as we continue to learn, then you'll already have the content in place. Uh, so make sure you do that. So all this will uh, give you a total of uh, 30%. Then, of course, the, the exam will be 70%. So really, that is it. Uh, I hope you'll uh, attend as much as possible. You'll attend these uh, classes as much as possible even with the challenges of internet bundles and so on and so forth, then also be coming in on time. Next week, I purpose that we begin at 7, at 7 a.m. So make sure you rest early on Sunday night so that you can be able to wake up early. So for the theory class, this is when we'll be meeting with uh, with all of you. So anyone with a question or a comment before we before we proceed? Anyone with a question or comment? Yeah, uh, in the beginning, your connection was, I don't know, you were breaking. Oh, sorry, sorry. Is that the case for anyone else? Yeah, so it's quite working on that. And then, uh -huh. how did you be posting the link to the e-money portal so that maybe that would The link? Yes, that, that's a good idea. I'll also be posting the links on the, I'll be posting the links on the on the portal, and also the notes and the course outline. So I'll, I'll post all those things. I haven't done so, but uh, by next week I'll have done it. Uh, uh. Okay. Uh -huh. Anyone else? Is Brandon here, the class rep for CS? I can see he's chatting me on WhatsApp. Some students have problems with their e-learning portal, so I'm asking how they'll be helped when it comes to marking the attendance. Uh, okay. So, uh, Brandon, uh, I'm not sure what you're saying, but uh, uh, when it comes to attendance, uh, I'll see. I'll I'll see what to do. I think you can begin doing that next week. But for the e-learning portal, if you want it sorted out, I can share some contacts for the for the support staff at the e-learning department in case you you have problems. Daniel, I'll request you to I'll request you to disable your video hmm Daniel are you able to disable your video When you're joining in, also use your use your name other than just your admission number, so that I can be able to refer to you in case I want to ask something. Daniel. 
Daniel, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, so anyone else with a question or comment before we proceed? Okay, wonderful. So let's do this. Okay, so for this training, I'll be using notes. Uh, I will be using notes by uh, NCC Education, which is a British uh, education college that offers a very great training when it comes to ICTs. So they have a, a, a course uh, called Designing and Developing a Website, DDW. So these notes are very nice and therefore they're the ones that I'm going to be using uh, to take you through this particular uh, unit. Okay, so this is topic number one, just an introduction to the module. So the purpose of this particular module is to uh, is to uh, give students an understanding of website design and development. That is how to build websites using HTML and cascading style sheets and also look at the factors that influence the design of websites, how to specify the design of websites and strategies for testing websites. So really this entire module that is what we are going to be looking at. Uh, so for this particular topic we are going to look at what the internet is what IoT is, and also have an understanding of the World Wide Web, WWW, and how it works. Mm. We're also going to understand what we call web standards. Web standards and also try to figure out why web standards are important. Lastly, we are going to look at the challenges of web design. Challenges of web designs, including these three. Okay, so by the end of this topic, by the end of this topic, you should be able to define what the internet is, IoT, and the World Wide Web, describe broad terms, uh, describe in broad terms what happens when a browser views a web page. We're also going to explain what HTML, CSS, and web standards are and describe challenges involved in designing web pages uh, 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 to be understood by as many people as possible many people as possible okay so what is the internet what is the internet what is IOT what is WWW any volunteer to tell us what the what they know about the internet? What is the internet? How can you define the internet in your own words? Anyone? Just unmute your mic and go ahead. Anyone? Mm -hmm, go ahead. Yeah, global, in, global international network. Uh -huh, very good. That's a good. That's a good one. Another, another try. How would you explain, for instance, what the internet is to your grandmother? How would you tell them what what what's the internet in the simplest of words? 
how can you describe the internet to your to your grandmother we are all users of the internet that's why we are here right now I'm waiting, I'm waiting, anyone? Okay, so let's move on. So the internet, as my brother said, is a worldwide network of computer networks. Now, this worldwide network, its purpose is sharing information. So that's the main purpose of a computer network. So a worldwide network of computer networks sharing information. Generally, some of the information that is shared over the internet include email, files using a protocol called file transfer protocol, instant messaging like whatsapp www like when you view websites chat kindly mute your mic so that we don't get the echo uh, voice over ip like skype and what we are using right now to learn and also peer-to-peer -peer networks p2p networks then we have the internet of things the Internet of Things. Now, the Internet of Things, on the other hand, is Internet, a network of Internet-connected objects that are able to collect and exchange data using embedded sensors. Using embedded sensors. Uh, using embedded sensors. So, when we have when we have uh, 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 sensors that are able to send data over the network or over the internet, uh, uh, so they read, for example, the environment and they send data over the internet, then that is what we call IoT, Internet of Things. And we also have a new term around this, which is IOE, the Internet of Everything, meaning that the world now is going towards uh, uh, smart everything so everything and anything can be able to connect uh, to the internet and be able to send data uh, 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 over the internet so in relation to IOT you need to understand what you call an IOT device so an IOT device is any standalone internet connected device that can be monitored it can be monitored or controlled from a remote location from a remote location uh, so for example you can be able to switch on your security light your home security light uh, 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 from your office you can be able to switch it off from an app in your in your in your in your smartphone so those are examples of IOT devices and applications smart homes for example and also wearables hmm? wearables so for example a, a, many of you right now are keeping this uh, white uh, adorable dogs called Chihuahua and you don't want to lose it so you you put something on the neck that will be able to send you uh, its location its location in real time so that in case you go for a walk and it strays and get lost you can still be able to recover it so those are just but examples of wearables and even kids nowadays Sometimes you, 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 you put on them a smartwatch that can be able to uh, uh, send them location and other information over the Internet. Now, after we've understood what IoT is, we now need to understand the World Wide Web. What is the World Wide Web? Now, the World Wide Web is defined 
as the collection of millions of interlinked documents. These documents particularly are called web pages on the internet, on the internet. So a uh, collection of millions of web pages on the internet is what we call the World Wide Web, so the documents that are there. Now we have two main technologies that support www. The first one is called HTML. HTML is the language that is used to write web pages in full. HTML is hypertext markup language. On the other hand, we have HTTP. HTTP is hypertext transfer protocol. And as you might have guessed, uh, HTTP enables the transfer of web pages over the internet. So these are communication rules that specify how web pages are transmitted over the internet. So that is what we call HTTP. HTTP. Okay. Now, how does the World Wide Web, how does the World Wide Web works? On the internet, we have two types of devices. A device that wants to access a particular website and a device that hosts that particular website. So that device that wants to access is called the client. So this might be your smartphone, your laptop, your tablet, and any other internet-enabled device. On the other hand, the server is just a powerful workstation, a powerful workstation that is hosting uh, certain web pages. So a collection of web pages, related web pages, is what we call a website. So a web server is used to store those particular web pages. For example, the MMU web server will store every page of our website inside that particular, the hard drive of that particular server. Now, uh, when we surf the web, when we surf the web, that's the common uh, term. We are clients. We are clients. So clients will seek services on the internet. Will seek services on the internet. On the other hand, servers will provide services to users of the internet or the clients. Now, how does it work? How does it work? Normally, normally, you will open up a browser in your device. In your browser, you're going to type what we call a URL. A URL. A URL, this one, is a universal resource locator. A universal resource locator. Now, once you type in the URL on the address bar of the browser, then you will be able uh, 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 to request for a particular web page. And that web page is going to be requested using the hypertext transfer protocol. So you type the URL here. Then after that, after that, uh, uh, the request will be sent out using HTTP uh, to the internet, uh, and your web server will receive that particular request. So let's see what happens next. When the web server receives the request, when the web server receives the request here. What happens is that the first thing it does is to authenticate the client. So authenticating is checking if the client is allowed to access the particular web page that it's requesting. So if yes, then the server finds the web page, which is actually a HTML document, and sends a copy back over the internet to the client. So again, all this is happening using HTTP. Uh, HTTP. So both the request when you are requesting and when it's being sent to us, and then we use HTTP to do that. Mm. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the last bit of uh, www. So what happens is that the browser will receive the web page. The browser will receive the web page. When the browser receives the web page, the browser is able to understand the HTML and then we'll be able to display the web page for the user. So the user then will view the web page and click on another link. That link, in this particular course, we'll be referring to links as hyperlinks. It's called a hyperlink. And the whole process will start over again. 
So for example, you've typed www.mmu.sc.ke, it takes you to the landing page. That landing page, uh, you've typed www.mmu.sc.ke, for example. So this takes you to the landing page, landing page. That landing page is called the home page. Uh, but for example, what you want to do is to go to the e-learning portal. So you'll click on the e-learning portal, e-learning portal, hyperlink, hyperlink. When you click on the e-learning portal, hyperlink, then it's going to take you. It's going to send the request again using HTTP. Server is going to check whether you are allowed to access the e-learning portal, then send back a copy of the e-learning portal web page to you. Uh, uh, so really, in summary, that is how uh, the www works. So now let's look. Uh, let's look at this example. This is uh, an example of a hypertext markup language page or document, a HTML document. Now, HTML, the purpose is to describe the structure of the web page. The structure of the web page. When you talk about the structure, what do we mean? What do we mean when you talk about the structure of the web page? HTML is used to specify which part of the document, for example, is going to be a heading. So, for example, these are called tags. The H1 tag is used to uh, specify that this text is going to be a heading one, uh, a heading one uh, text. So it's going to be bolded and it's going to be bigger than, for example, this text here. So P is a tag that is used to specify a paragraph. So this is just going to be a paragraph or this is going to be a heading. So really, that is what we mean when you talk about the structure of the web page. It's also used to specify, for example, uh, uh, things like lists, things like lists, things like tables, etc, uh, etc. Et Images, etc. So we are going to see several tags and understand their meaning as we continue to learn this particular course. Otherwise, we also have another language that is called CSS or cascading style sheets. Cascading style sheets, on the other hand, is used to specify the design of the web page. Design of the web page really is the outlook. So here we're talking about the fonts, the colors, the positions of different parts of the page. Uh, so, for example, uh, here we are having uh, uh, we are having what you call a selector called body. A selector called body. So, this selector simply means that everything that is enclosed with the body tag should have a font family. Should have a font family of Arial, uh, a size of 0.8 m. It should have a background color of blue, and the foreground color, the text color, should be red. Uh, so those are the kind of things, really, that uh, CSS is able to do. So you can see, for example, here we are saying that any tag, anything that has been enclosed within the H1 tag, uh, should have the font family of Georgia, font face times New Roman, etc., etc. So those are some of the things you can be able to do in CSS including line spacing, spacing between lines, uh, spacing between lines, you can be able to specify. So CSS really allows you to format your web page just like you can be able to format uh, your Word document. Uh, so all those things you can be able to specify in CSS that you can be able to specify, for example, in a Word document and even more because you can even do animations. Uh, 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 in CSS. Okay, so now here we learn a very important concept, the concept of uh, uh, a body called W3C, W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium. World Wide Web Consortium. Now, one of the uh, one of the reasons as to why the internet became so popular is because uh, uh, of uh, is because of web pages is because of the www 
it's because now people could be able to share data using websites. Otherwise, before that, the internet was not very popular. And at this point, I want to give you a reading assignment. I want you to go on Google and read about the history of the internet. The history of the internet. Now, really, at the very beginning, the internet was just used to exchange data between uh, research institutions, which are universities, and also the military uh, research bases. And normally this was done uh, through uh, email. But in 1989, in 1989, a guy called Tim Berners-Lee, which is considered as who is considered as one of the fathers of the internet, invented the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web, uh, as we've said. The World Wide Web is the collection of interlinked, millions of interlinked documents on the internet. So really, WWW was invented by Tim, Tim, Tim Berners-Lee. Now, he then founded the consortium W3C in 1994 in order to bring in people, uh, 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 including uh, multinational organizations and any other interested individuals, uh, to develop the WWW. So really, by March 2011, it had more than 323 members from organizations such as Apple, Google, Microsoft. So what is the purpose? What is the purpose of the W3C consortium? What do they do? Now, W3C, they oversee the continued development of the WWW. So it is an international an international community that develops open standards. Very important. Open standards. Open standards. Now, uh, okay, so uh, let me see. Okay. Okay, so in ICTs we talk of open standards. Standards. Stand. Standards. So standards are really protocols. Protocols are rules that govern the communication on the internet. Otherwise, we also have proprietary. Proprietary. Proprietary standards. So proprietary, really, you can think of these as private, private protocols, private protocols, while this other one, okay, so really open standards mean that they are public, they are public protocols while proprietary are developed by particular vendors or organizations. So they are private protocols and can only be used by devices from those particular uh, uh, vendors. So open standards, this is one of the reasons as to why uh, 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 the Internet also has been able to grow because it supports interoperability. Be me, yes? I'm actually recording. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, so open standards. Eh? Open standards are public protocols. So W3C really is one of the one of the few organizations. Uh, no, but uh, one among some of the organizations that develop open standards. And as I've said, open standards ensures. Uh, what we call openness, which is one of the principles of uh, of of the of of the internet. Mm? Openness. Openness means that uh, the internet is open and devices from different vendors can be able uh, to interconnect devices and therefore form the internet. Now, as you've said, the W3C, W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. World Wide Web Consortium is one of the organizations that support uh, that support uh, or develop open standards. Others, for example, 
include IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. We also have IEEE. Uh, we also have, for example, IEEE, the, in, uh, the Institute for Electrical and Electronics Engineers, which most of the time develops the, the physical layer uh, protocols, while IETF really most of the time develop the upper layer uh, beyond the physical layer uh, protocols. Okay, so you're going to learn about more as you continue to uh, go through your course. So you can be a member, you can actually register to be a member of some of these uh, open standard development bodies, and it also adds to your CV uh, uh, as an individual and helps you to network and become a global citizen. So that's one thing I want to ask uh, of you to do. Uh, please read about uh, these um, uh, organizations that create open standards on the Internet and register in at least one of them where you can start learning as early as now when you're a student so that you can be able to uh, grow, grow in it. So don't forget that. So what are web standards? Web standards are specifications and guidelines that the W3C produce. Uh, so that is what we call web standards. Examples of web standards include actually HTML and CSS specifications. Uh, so they are the ones that really uh, uh, develop the different versions, for example, of HTML or CSS. So for example, the latest version of HTML is HTML5 and CSS is CSS3. Uh, so they are the ones that say that H1 is the tag for heading one. Please remember to mute your mic so that you don't interrupt our class. So the standards aim to provide web technologies that support the greatest number of web users. The greatest number of web users. So that's the main reason as to why we, we have web standards. When we create websites, it is important. It is important to follow web standards. Why? Because when we follow web standards, then we can guarantee that your website is accessible to as many users as possible, uh, irrespective of the device they are using or other challenges they are having. For example, they are able differently and so on and so forth. So we are going to look into this even more as we go on. Now, As web designers, you're going to face some challenges. You're going to face some challenges. Uh, some of these challenges, as you develop websites, you're going to realize that we have a number of web browsers which render, uh, 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 which render HTML and CSS differently. So that's a challenge. Another one is uh, uh, users access devices using different uh, access websites using different devices. These devices also have different screen sizes and screen resolution. So you, you're also going to understand how that is a challenge. Another challenge for you as a web developer is accessibility. Accessibility. How do you ensure that your website is uh, friendly to people living with disabilities, living with disabilities. So that is what we call accessibility. And the last challenge is usability. Usability, on the other hand, is uh, uh, how do you ensure that uh, users of your website are able to accomplish tasks quickly and easily, quickly and easily. So that is what we call usability. So let's look into each of these challenges that you will experience as a web designer. One of them we said uh, uh, is uh, having different web browsers. Uh, can you name, can you please name some of the web browsers that you know? Just unmute your mic and shout it out. Internet Explorer, another one, Google Chrome, another one, Firefox, 
Firefox, Mozilla Firefox. Yes. Oh, Chromium. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Now, Opera. Opera. Safari. Safari. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, I'm glad that someone mentioned Opera. I also just wanted to know uh, uh, what are some of the popular web browsers that are used, especially when you're using your mobile phone. When you're using your mobile phone, which which browsers do you use? Google Chrome. Uh -huh, Google Chrome. Any other person? Yeah, Opera, too. Opera. Opera. Yeah, Opera Mini was very popular, especially some years ago, because specifically it was targeting mobile users. So it was very popular in the beginning. But of course, uh, Google Chrome, because it comes with uh, the Android devices, it has overtaken Opera uh, to some extent. But um, uh, let me also ask, which one do you think is the most popular, most popular web browser in your opinion, and why do you think so? Anyone? Yes. Ah, 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 wonderful. And I'm liking it that you say that it supports most current technologies because that's one of the challenge. That's one of the challenge of having different web browsers because uh, some web browsers are not updated regularly. So because they delay in updating them, they are not able to support some uh, uh, some of the developments of HTML, for example, or CSS. And therefore, when you as a web developer uh, create a web page uh, and you, you test it just using Google Chrome, for example, another person using a different web browser might not be able to uh, see that web page the way you had, you had envisioned it. So it will not render that web page because maybe it does not understand those tags that you've used. And that's one of the main challenges. Okay, anyone with a different opinion about the most popular web browser in Kenya? Which browsers are your parents using? Is it still Google Chrome or is it something different? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. So, this is a list of some of the web browsers. Popular web browsers. I'm sure you heard of Safari. Uh, There's always a joke that Internet Explorer is the browser that is used to download other other browsers, which is partially true because uh, Windows actually, when you install Windows, it comes with Internet Explorer. And one of the problems with Internet Explorer and why it was left behind and overtaken uh, by in terms of popularity is because of that issue of it was not regularly uh, updated. And therefore, uh, 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 more when more browsers like Mozilla and Google Chrome came up, really they they overtook they overtook uh, Internet Explorer. Okay. So uh, it is important for you. Uh, it is important for you as a web developer to find out the statistics the statistics. So we have a website called StatCounter which is hosted at gs.statcounter.com that is used to provide the analysis of global browser usage. 
Why do you want to know this? You want to know this so that you know, as you develop your website, which browsers do you use to test? Which browsers do you use to test your website? Because you might not be able, per se, to test on all browsers. But you need to test at least on three or four popular browsers. So anytime you're developing a website, please remember to check the statistics. I'm not sure whether we have local uh, statistics uh, uh, about, for example, the popularity of each of the browser in Kenya, for example. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, uh, Uh, and that's why they're saying this, that browser's usage often varies between different countries. So it is important that you have a feel uh, uh, and know-how of which browsers are being used. Okay, so how can you design a web page that works across uh, a range of different web browsers? How can you do that? Different web browsers support different features of HTML. So that's one of the challenges. Another one, different browsers interpret CSS rules in different ways. So that's one one uh, that's the problem with having multiple uh, web browsers. So normally, really, if you follow, if you follow as you develop your website, you follow the W3C web standards. Then the most recent, and by recent we say the most uh, the recently updated browsers will be able to support those particular uh, standards. Because really, even the, the companies that develop, that develop those web standards, uh, th those browsers, uh, are actually part of the W3C consortium. Mm. So that is one of them. That, remember here, I'm just saying, to overcome this challenge of having multiple or different web browsers, solutions are two. Number one, use W3, use W3C web standards. Solution number two is test, test. View the site in as many different browsers as possible before making the site live. So before you host the site and you allow users to access it, make sure you, you test it. You view every single page and see how it's rendered on the different browsers so that you can see whether you can have a solution to any. So please remember those two solutions. Okay, so the other challenge as a web browser, you're go ah, as a web designer, you're going to experience is the challenge of having different devices and screen resolution. Different devices and screen resolution. So really, the problem here is that uh, web users surf the internet using many different devices not just desktop PCs. So what are some of the devices that are used to access the internet? Uh, so most common nowadays, really, smartphones, smartphones, smartphones. Most likely right now, you are learning through your smartphone. But these are the other internet-enabled devices that can be able to uh, 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 really uh, uh, access the web. They're also called web-enabled devices. So these devices have different sized displays. For example, mobile devices have 100 by 128 by 128 pixels, while most desktop computers and laptops really come with a re resolution of 1024 by 768. Uh, so you see, if you design, if you design for the desktop computer. If that website is viewed on your mobile device, then what is going to be the problem? Users are going to scroll, for example, horizontally in order to read other parts, other parts of your of your of your web page, because it cannot fit. It's too huge for this screen. Now, screen resolution is an important factor. It is an important factor in web design. Why? Because users are not supposed to scroll horizontally. I'm not sure whether you've ever tried to access any website that is not mobile friendly and you have to scroll horizontally and also upward, uh, it can become very tasking and boring. Otherwise, 
why we need to take care of screen resolution is because important information is just supposed to be visible to the user at a go. So important information such as the main menu, main menu, also called the main navigation bar, uh, it's supposed to be visible to the user all the time. So they're not supposed to search for it. No, 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 no. They're supposed for usability. They're supposed to be able to see home, about us, contact us, and all the other menu items that you have on the main menu, which is normally located at the top of your website. So how can we design a web page that works across a range of different display resolutions? And how can we be able to do that? We have two types of uh, 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 web design uh, uh, options. We can either create what we call a fixed web page design or a fluid web page design. Now fixed is when you are creating a web page for the lowest popular resolution. So for example, you want to create a web uh, page for desktop computers. Uh, uh, so it will fit perfectly on this, which is the most popular resolution, uh, 1024 by 768. Otherwise, otherwise, no, the problem with this is that if you have a computer or a monitor that has a large uh, a screen resolution, then we are going to have large amounts of empty space, white space. They're normally, for uh, not really white, depends on the background color of the website. But you're going to have some empty space. If the website is centered, then you're going to have some empty space on the left, another empty space on the right. Uh, so I'm sure you've seen this, uh, that when you, if you have a monitor that has a big screen resolution, then the, the website leaves some very big, big space on the left and the right. So that is what happens when you use the fixed web page design. Otherwise, the recommended one is fluid web page design, where the page width resizes to fit the size of the browser window. Or the browser window. So here, even on large displays, on large displays, uh, the line length can affect the readability of the text. Okay, so here, uh, because it's going to fit on this large display, it means that a person is going to be moving their head too much, reading from left to right, for example. So that is what you're calling the line length, which can affect the readability of the text. But really, the recommended method uh, is this one. The recommended method is you create fluid web page. In this particular course, we are going to be creating fluid web page, and we are going to learn how to create fluid web page, web pages that can be able to resize on different screen resolution. So uh, this is uh, this is already happening. This is already happening. Designing designing for mobile devices. So this is already happening that a large number of users are actually accessing web pages from mobile devices. So what makes surfing the web on a mobile device difficult? What makes it difficult? Uh, and how can we design a web page that works for mobile users? Mm. So, of course, what makes it difficult is the small screen. And therefore, sometimes if, uh, if uh, you're accessing a website that has a fixed web page design, they have to scroll horizontally. Uh, that's one of the problems, small screen size and resolution. So how can we uh, design a page for that works for mobile users? One of the strategies is to create a separate site just for mobile users. For example, Facebook actually has a separate site for mobile users, hmm? uh, which is hosted at this URL, m m facebook.com so you, you you get that some companies just create they create a uh, 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 web pages for mobile users hmm? and that's why you can be able to access facebook.com even from the feature fonts hmm? the ones you call mulikamwizi or something the feature fonts you can be able to access it because they have created it to fit on that small screen, not just smartphones, which have a bigger screen, but even the feature phones. 
you can be able to access it from m.facebook.com. So that's one of the strategies, creating a separate site for mobile users. Uh, uh, even mainstream sites should be designed to make them usable by mobile users. So, of course, the other strategy is to create fluid, fluid uh, web, page, web pages. Okay, so that is it about screen size and screen resolution. The other problem now that we are looking at here is accessibility. Accessibility is designing websites that people with disabilities can use. People with disabilities can use. Can you at this point name the different disabilities that would affect someone's ability to use a website? Someone? Just unmute your mic and go ahead. Very good, very good. That is true. So some people really have what we call motor challenges. They are not able to use their hands uh, to be able to type on the keyboard. So that's very true. In your opinion, how do you think we can create websites that support this kind of people? In your thinking? Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. Exactly, so we can enable voice commands, wonderful voice commands. Okay, another person? Any other disability? Okay, for the interest of time, we will move forward. Please remember to mute your mic. So other disabilities include visual. So I won't explain that visual. Then you have motor challenges, limited or no use of hands. Uh, so these ones could struggle to use conventional input devices like the mouse or even the keyboard. Uh, then we have auditory. Auditory, again, for these ones, they are deaf or they have a problem when it comes to hearing. They're using a hearing aid. Uh, so they could struggle to understand audio or video content on the web. Then the other one, uh, which most people uh, don't appreciate, is cognitive. Cognitive. Cognitive disabilities, people with cognitive disabilities may struggle, may struggle uh, to use websites with complex language or navigation or interaction processes so these are people who are slow learners can i call them or they have there's something called learning disabilities they have a learning disability and therefore if they see anything that is too complex it's just a it's just a turn off for them and they won't be able to uh, 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 perform any task on your website so that is what you call cognitive uh, uh, disability or challenges so for this group of people, we need to consider them by using what you call assistive technologies. Assistive technologies. Assistive technologies are technologies that assist a disabled person uh, to use your website. For example, for the visually impaired, we can use what you call screen readers. So we are going to look at how to be able to do that. You can use screen readers to help them to surf your your web page the screen reader really reads out the contents of your of your web page otherwise for motor impaired users as we correctly said we can use for example uh, voice recognition or even eye tracking they can scroll using their their eye or mouth ones mouth ones or you can design specific uh, keyboards that are designed to support them. So why do you think accessibility is important? Why do you think accessibility is important? Uh, why do you think? Why do you think it's important? So disabled users really make up a significant proportion of web users. And therefore, accessible sites assist. Oh, 
the other thing is that accessible sites also assist the older web users. You know that as we grow old, also our cognitive capability uh, depreciates. Uh, so really, accessible sites will assist, assist older web users. Mm. Then, many countries have a legal requirement, really. They have a legal requirement uh, to support disabled users. Uh, just that we have, for example, a legal requirement uh, to support people living with disabilities. For example, the ramps in institutions. Uh, uh, so it is actually a, a legal requirement in some countries. I'm not sure about Kenya. Then accessible sites also assist mobile users. They also assist mobile users. So that is why we need to create uh, accessible websites. Okay, so strategies for designing accessible websites, number one, follow, so solutions. Just use the web standards. Mm. When you use web standards, then the website is going to be more accessible. Uh, so as we go through the module, we'll consider some strategies for making uh, web pages accessible. So we're going to be looking at some tags that you can use to make your web pages accessible. The last challenge, the last challenge is usability. Usability is designing effective websites. No, designing effective websites involve much more than deciding the look and feel of a site. So usability is about designing a site where users can accomplish tasks quickly and easily. Quickly and easily. So usability include factors such as the site structure, navigation, interface design, and how long pages take to take to download. Mm. So the site structure really is how you site structure is how you have designed uh, uh, the layout of your web page. Normally we use rows and columns in order to make it easy to uh, 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 to surf. Uh, to make users to be able to follow content within your website. And then navigation. Navigation is, for example, the top link, uh, the top menu. So those links that users need in order to access different parts of your website. The interface de design is the look and feel, for example, of your interface. And also things like uh, how long the page takes to download. So are you using very heavy images? If you do that, then users are going to uh, uh, to give up uh, before even your uh, your your website uh, 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 downloads. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this particular topic. Uh, uh, we now go to topic number two, but before that. If anyone has a question, I'll give them a, a chance to ask and I'll answer. So anyone with a question? Anyone with a question? Okay. So uh, I'll give us a 10 minutes break. We go and uh, stretch. So 10 minutes health break. Then we come back at 9.50, 9.50, and then we can continue from there on topic number two.